Don't be <laughs> yee-hawing before we even begin. <laughs> My favorite is that you literally got a, like halfway into that sentence and you were like, wait. Well, I saw the countdown <laughs> and I knew gotta- <laughs> that if I kept talking, it would be cut off part of mm-hmm. the way. Like you would only get the second half of the sentence. Mm-hmm. And I felt that it was important for our listeners. It was important. I was yee-hawing too close to the sun. It's always a risk. It is. Always a risk. Speaking of yee-hawing too close to the sun, I got a... Or I don't think it was a match. I just, like, passed somebody on Tinder or something, or one of the various dating Mm -hmm. apps. I don't know. Uh, And he had, like, no bio, two pictures, very little information, but he did have his five interests selected, you know? (laughs) Like, you can pick. I think Mm -hmm. it was Tinder. And one of them was equestrian. (laughs) And I think actually the second picture was like him riding a horse. Riding a horse. So like he did mean equestrian, but I was like, huh. Is he a brony? That's just Is not he something fancy? you see very often. Because like I have a horse, but I wouldn't list equestrian on a dating app. Mm-hmm. So mad respect. I did swipe left, but respect. Well, it's also because like if it's your interest, maybe rather than equestrian, it'd be like horseback riding. Or like, well, I think it's, it's one of those things where you had to like select the option. Oh, so the option was just <laughs> equestrian. Yeah, for some reason Tinder has an option oh. to select equestrian. I mean, that is the word he, if he's an equestrian. Yeah, but like, it's just I don't think I've ever, I didn't know that was an option because I've literally never seen anyone who selected that as one of their interests. No, I feel like here it would be fish. I don't know if there's a fancy word for fishing. Probably not. It's probably fishing. No. I think it's just fishing. <laughs> there are so many fish. Well, that makes sense. I mean, I live in Texas, so equestrian mm-hmm. distracts. I mean, fish the land of 10,000 plus lakes. I mean, yeah. But it has to be a really good fish to catch my interest. And there just aren't. I mean, it's a good fish. It's impressive. Most of them aren't. Well, Is that a metaphor? Sure. Don't be scared. I don't like that you specified. <laughs> you could have just let it be metaphorical, but instead you really had to drive home that it was a metaphor. <laughs> it's actually true, though. I th- I have to assume yeah. the ones that are, like, very, like, underwhelming fish are doing it for the joke of it. So then I'm like, are you actually funny? Because that's pretty funny. Is it? A little bit, like a little sunfish. I see, I see too many yeehaws on the dating app. Yeah. Yeah, see. The dating app, the singular. <laughs> There's just a lot of goat beards. I feel like I've talked about <laughs> this before. Like, um, I went to school with a school of like 2,500 people, and the town itself was like 5,000. Um, so it was very small in like central western Minnesota. Um, and... All it had in the men department were D3 athletes. I love that department. <laughs> Shop in the men department. Shop there all the time. <laughs> Honestly, I have no, some I returns. I have some returns. Yeah. Um, so all of the guys were either um, D3 athletes who thought they were a big deal because they're athletes, but sirs you are d3 athletes not being paid to play um they acted like they were the best and yet like football was the worst sport at that school um and then the other half were just really yeehaw like blondies with light blonde goat beards because they would have like you know the blonde scruff all over and then just like the like like part like the <laughs> beard that like hangs down a little bit and then yeah, since it's like is, blonde i'm not a fan of this <laughs> no. mental image it's horrible and you can see so many of them that is deeply mm-hmm. unfortunate i really just don't think uh most people should have facial hair no roy can i like can really be able to grow it and grow like it, yeah. maintain and take care of it i agree but other than that I went out mm-hmm. to get drinks this weekend with mm-hmm. a friend of mine, and she was out to dinner with another friend and was like, hey, do you mind if I bring mm-hmm. her along? And I was like, yeah, of course. Um, so I met this girl, and she's from my hometown, which is pretty small, and so we found out we went to the same high school, which like oh, can be hit her. We have two high schools, so like a oh, lot of times yeah, people so would be like, we. oh, you must know so-and-so, and I'm like, no. 
wrong high yeah. school. We don't know. Anyway, but we knew each other – or we didn't know each other. We went to the same high school, but she was a few years older. Um, so she was like, well, maybe you know my siblings. Uh, and she said the one. And I was like, yeah, I do. Like, I, I wasn't mm-hmm. friends with him, but, like, I we, – we went to the same schools for many years. So, mm-hmm. like, I knew of him, you know. Um <laughs> and but I wanted to make sure because you know it's been a long time and I was like I think like I recognize the name I think I know who you're talking about mm-hmm. she's like oh like he was a football player let me see if I have a picture he's uh, a pilot in the navy now so he's got oh. that stupid mustache <laughs> uh, oh she's like he didn't have a mustache in high school we weren't allowed to have we the guys weren't allowed to grow facial hair interesting um, uh, it was part of the dress code. But she's like, he's got that stupid mustache that all the Air Force pilots or Navy pilots have. Yeah. Well, also Air Force pilots. All the all pilots. Of them. All the pilots. And also just like men generally of yeah. our age bracket, but especially the pilots. Every time I see mm-hmm. one, they're in the Top Gun outfit and they have the Miles Teller yeah. mustache. But the problem is that they're not Miles Teller. They are not. Someone needs to tell them. And your and stupid little you. ratty mustache yeah. doesn't make you Miles Teller. Yeah. Yeah, that's the phenomenon whenever there's like a hockey go about something or another. There's always the mullet. Um, cause they grow their, no. they, they grow their, <laughs> always, they grow their hair out during the season and then like during postseason they like shave half of it so it's a mullet. And then there's always like the, um, Mo, Movember or something like that. Um, mm. it's just a very, hairy time i don't like that no no or like in high school all the guys whenever there was like a um you know state or anything they'd always like bleach their hair and give themselves the worst haircuts it was not fun i would not do it if i i would be like no you can push me off of a diving board i'm not gonna do that no yeah no 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 well on that note Mm -hmm. we Mm -hmm have the longest tbr tuesday episodes known to man so we probably need Ugh. to mix the banter and move <laughs> forward yeah before we end up with another two-hour episode which yeah. now that i've said that i've probably jinxed it and you the listener little, are probably looking at the time stamp on this episode going it's gonna be two hours caroline <laughs> maybe we'll be surprising yay <laughs> say it with hope in my eyes a little sparkle and you're just silent um (laughs) the silence is deafening (laughs) never heard silence Silence quite this loud loud. (laughs) caroline's been listening to speak now and i approve i've been listening to all of taylor swift i I I created two because i used to just like go to my liked songs and shuffle but sometimes that includes when i like an album and then it's all the songs Mm, from that album and that's annoying so now i just Mm -hmm. created two private playlists taylor bops and sad girl taylor slash (laughs) chill So that if I want to, like, sing along and dance, I have one playlist I can shuffle. And if I want to just, like, vibe and also sing along, Mm because I'm going to sing along no matter what, we have that one. Which means I've been going through, like, her entire discography to make sure all the songs are sorted correctly. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, you'll catch me doing the little um, intake of breath and last kiss. Like, I'm the one crying about Joe Jonas. (laughs) A really emotional time for me. I can tell you that right now. No, that's a good song. I recently got back into Dear John. That's a really fun one to sing in the car. Except for I make embarrassing singing song sounds. (laughs) Singing song sounds? I was in the car recently, and the note that I didn't hit, but the one that I did hit, (laughs) was so embarrassingly bad. And I'm like, what's the etiquette in that situation? Because you're alone in the car, but you've just embarrassed yourself. (laughs) You but no to one's there to, to, yeah, to, no one's there to make fun of you. So, like, how are you to get over it? <laughs> you have to just, like, sit there for a little bit. Be like, wow. That's a new <laughs> low for me. <laughs> or I have to, I'll, like, pretend to, like, clear my throat. Like, <laughs> I'm sick. Um, But I'm just bad at singing. Yeah, that's my... Sorry. I dude. wonder sometimes <laughs> what people see when they, like, drive oh. past me and oh, I'm yeah. in the middle of, like, full-on belting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've just accepted it at this point. I used to be, like, really reserved. Oh, and now no. I'm like, you know what? I'll put on a show. Oh, I used to practice singing, like, for real, because I took voice lessons and mm-hmm. was in choir and stuff. So, like, the car was the only time I had alone to practice. So you would catch well, I mean, me same, belting yeah. show tunes. Yeah. 
You do the thing where you like you open your mouth really wide to hit the note. That's a you like. <laughs> it depends on the song, obviously, but sometimes <laughs> if there's a note that you can't hit, if you push your jaw down a little bit more, oh. it can help you hit it. Oh, um, God. I have jaw issues. So, so the way not. that I would be in the car with my jaw <laughs> unhinged, just, like a snake, like, just, oh my God, like full on belting. I'm not joking. Anyway, well, that has, that, I we do fell not back that. into banter. Hannah. We did. We we did fall. Well. <laughs> Jump, then fall. Then we fall. jumped and fell. I was just back <laughs> into that banter. <laughs> uh, yeah. We'll show ourselves out. Uh, no, we won't. No. Today. Oh, no, wait. We're, we're here. <laughs> Taylor Swift point before we move on from the banter is that my dad today, I, he was like, he like yelled something and I was like, yeah. you're being very loud. I need you to like <laughs> calm down a little bit. And I wasn't referencing the song. I just yeah. was like, this is a lot. I yeah. need you to chill. And he said, you need to calm down. And then he said something else. And then he was like, you're being too loud. And I was like, have you also been listening to taylor swift and he was it's like oh phenomenon. is that a tay tay reference and i didn't even know and i was like well that's revolting but yeah it was it's weird that you quoted the lyrics like that without knowing that song <laughs> that's, that's quite funny yeah okay we need to jump and fall out of the banter now 12 minutes and seven. into romance or tbr sometimes we forget to say the name of the podcast <laughs> sometimes we do and I try to find it when I'm editing to add nope. the music, and I'm like, shit. We just don't. <laughs> yeah. We just don't, and that's okay. Um, it's fine. Yeah. TV fairly Tuesday. often, I'll think to myself, we should just record a standard intro. We should. And then I'm like, that's lame. There's no charm. And we have the charm offensive. And it's hard to banter your way into it when you have... A standard exactly, intro. and we would be the most awkward humans known to podcast if we were to record. We recorded the trailer, and it's just us being like, <laughs> "Hey, I sound so, I sound angry because I was like so tired." And then um, it gets into the the blooper reel or the highlight reel, and then I'm like, "There, yeah, that part's our, excellent." But our <laughs> colors show. It really it hits the lows and the highs. That yeah. Trailer. It brings you through it. It's like the uh, roller coaster rush, dare I say. Okay. Anyway, today sure is TBR Tuesday. It is. So it is. I I'm I'm just gonna hit the really good ones. I think that I've read. Yeah. Because uh, I've read some stinkers. <laughs> that I do. Probably well, not that many, but but I, we don't need to talk about those. No. Okay, why don't you start us off? Uh, oh, I was gonna. We're just gonna go chronological. Um, standard disclaimer that I work for Forever, and this is a Forever book. I really that's how our, that's, that's how our trailer sounded. Just <laughs> right. It was just us being tired and not knowing what to say. Um, I. I live in fear. I'm just going to say that disclaimer literally every time. Anyway, I um, yeah. I listened to Something Wild and Wonderful by Anita Kelly, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, which is a, a queer MM romance between two guys being dudes on the Pacific Crest Trail. Nice. Uh, and they hike a lot and they read to each other. And the, God, there's some so highs nice. and lows, both in terms of topography and their relationship. <laughs> There's a brief nice. interlude with their family. They read mm. to each other. They see one of them is like really into birds, which I relate to and respect. I do like that. He's really into birds and he doesn't really feel like eating food most of the time except for gummy bears, which is relatable of him. Um it is pretty it's like very healing and like comforting and warm, but mm-hmm. it's also like trigger warnings cuz one of the main characters has he was raised in a really religious family, like one of the mm-hmm. really intense, strict religious communities, um, and just came out to his family and his parents basically, like, cut him off. Um, gotcha. So he's, you know, dealing with that uh, out on the trail. So there's some pretty serious things going on there. But I, it's all handled really well. You can tell that um, Anita Kelly, they really have the experience to pull it off um and handle it with care 
and it was just very lovely and sweet. So, and the audiobook yeah. was really good. Every person I've seen on Instagram, like, there has been no bad words said about that book. No. Every review is like, this is the best thing I've ever read. Yeah. It's yeah. it's just, like, very profound, but in a very, like, soft, quiet way, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. That's the vibe I get from Anita Kelly's um, mm-hmm. just entire presence. Mm-hmm. They just, like, have a lot of care. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which I really like. Yes, that one is on my TBR. I hope it's on script because it's probably got a long list, like, whole time at the library. I don't know. Mm. I would recommend listening to the audiobook while you go yeah. take a nature walk or a hike. Mm. It's very mm-hmm. scenic. We tried to, to walk the other day and it was still so cold. It was, like, 40 degrees, which honestly should be fine for right now because we are not used to that anymore. Um, so anything above 30 is like, wow, it's so warm, which is how I felt going out to the mailbox. I was like, it's so warm, guys. We get out there. We kind of go to like the northern part of our town, which was a mistake because wind. Uh, and then it was cold. We lasted five minutes and got ice cream. <laughs> okay, so, so maybe you personally shouldn't go for the hike. No. But if you live no. in a place where it's not 40 degrees. I really like wish. if you live that. in Texas and it's 80 mm-hmm. degrees. Actually, that now it's too hot for me to walk mm-hmm. most days. Really? It's only March. Yeah, I don't be walking in 80 degree weather. Um, that is true. That is true. Anyway, but that's that's me. Nice. Uh, the first one, I think I was reading it when we did our last TBR Tuesday, so I don't think I talked about it. Um, it's This Time It's Real um, by Anne Lang. I apologize if I mispronounced that name. Um, but it's a YA um romance it was super cute it kind of reminded me of soulmates um because the he- the hero in both um is like a celebrity um mm. in that one i oh actually i think they're both actors um basically the heroine eliza she <laughs> she has to write this essay about something that happened over a break and she nothing happened to her, which is big relatable. Um, so she like made up this entire story about how she like fell in love um, and like met someone new and did all these cute things. Um, and then it goes viral, and um, it like blows up into this whole thing. And she actually she's never like, she doesn't have a boyfriend or anything, um, so she's kind of freaking out. And then um, she had noticed the hero, Kaz, in the hallway um, because she had just moved to a new school in Beijing. So she's, like, still pretty new. Um, So she had seen him, like, talking to his mom on the phone. And um, through shenanigans, they end up fake dating so she Mm. can get this internship and, you know, launch her writing career. Because she's a really good writer because everyone was like, oh, my God, this is, like, the best thing I've ever read. Um, And then he needs to, like, have his image look a little bit better because of like some PR thing that had happened um, like pretty close to before the story started. Um, And it was just really cute. The soulmates had a lot of like manager drama um, where, you know, they were trying to like manipulate the relationship where this one was just really like mellow and sweet. Um, The only thing is that the ending just ended, which is how endings do be doing, but it was just done. And I was like, excuse me? They had, oh. Because Eliza, she couldn't tell the, like, she could not tell the truth if it was, like, slapping her in the face. Her and the truth were, like, oil and water. Like, she couldn't do it. So it was a lot of, like, back and forth. Because this guy, he was adorable. But so by the time, you know, they got together, it was, like, right at the end. And I'm like, you can't do this to me. There wasn't even an epilogue. It's fine. Um, It was a really cute time. The audiobook was really good. Um, and sometimes you just need the good YA to hit the spot and, um, you know, get you out of, like, adult worries. I wish I was fake dating <laughs> a celebrity who turns into my real date. I don't think I do. Hmm. Don't think I could handle fake dating. That is true. That would stress me out. Um, well, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit because the segue works to another book that, yes. like, Okay. It also just ended. Um, um, that was my – I was like, oh, oh. Like, I kept trying – I was like, yeah. is the – I got it from yeah. the library, the ebook, and I was like, am I missing pages? You were like, pages? is it broken? Yeah. What's going yeah. on? Um, well, actually, I'll do two because I feel the same way about both of them. And they are both by E.E. E. Ottoman, mm-hmm. who is a 
trans historical romance writer. Um, some of his, I haven't read the other one, but they were like ma- magical historical romances as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but the two that I read are both like novellas, shorter. Um, the Companion doesn't really end quite as abruptly. Um, that one was interesting. Both of them, I gave like three stars, but it wasn't... They were books that I read and I was like, I think that this would really work for someone. Mm -hmm. For many people, probably. It just, like, wasn't right for me, you know? Like, it wasn't bad. It was quite lovely. But it just, they weren't, they weren't for me. Mm -hmm. Um, The Companion is two trans women and a trans man. And the Companion, whose name I am blanking on, um, Madeline comes from new york city she wants to be a writer and her brother was like oh there's this guy living out in the country and he's like really lonely he lives in this big old house so you can just go live with him for free and like be his companion um he's also a writer so she just like goes out to this big house and lives with him and then next door and by next door i mean it's like through the woods to get there because they live on lots of land um there's this other woman who is like very attractive and it mm-hmm. turns out she and the the guy that she's living with, Victor, like, those two have a past history. So there's some tension there. And Madeline is, like, really into both of them. So she just has a lot of sex with both of them. And then they That's end up fun. in a little like thruple. Aw. So, you know, there's that. And then The Craft of Love is the other one. And that one, it really just ends. It takes the whole time for them to, like, uh, to get together. It was really interesting. It's a... I think it's the hero is trans. Um, and he's like a, whatchamacallit, like a metal work. What is the blacksmith, I guess? <laughs> I was like metallurgy. That's metal not... metal worker. I don't know. He makes, <laughs> but like, he makes like That's fine, smoothie. like silver, like teapots mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. utensils and things. Um, and he has these dresses that his mother, before she died, had made him because his mother never really got the whole (laughs) identity thing and was like really holding on to hope uh rip but he doesn't want to just like get rid of these dresses because they're very beautifully embroidered so he Mm -hmm. uh offers to exchange he finds a a woman who's like a professional quilter um and she turns it into this very lovely quilt and he makes her a teapot and they're also like very into each other and like go on little walks and things but it also like they finally are like i'm in love and they kiss and then it's over and you're like huh what do you mean? Um, the thing with both of these is that they're really slow and really soft. Yeah. And they're, like, really in the details. Like, the companion especially will get into, like, their everyday routine and the food that they're making and mm. what they're wearing. Mm-hmm. And, like, it can be, I feel, like, very soothing for some people and, like, very, like, aesthetic. And, like, you're just living in this little world hanging out. Mm-hmm. And there's not a ton of angst beyond, like, you know, they've been hurt in the past and they're, you know, working that out. For me, though, it was just kind of boring. Yeah. Where I was like, I need something to happen. <laughs> yeah. And not a lot happened in either of them. Yeah. So that's my – if you want, like, a cozy, queer, mm-hmm. like, it's very soft. Both of those, I think, were, like, very lovely and sweet. hmm So. Yeah, I don't – like, the whole abruptly ending thing after the kiss is, like, a whole mm-hmm. YA thing, you know, that just a lot of the time happens um especially if there's not like you know to all the boys I love before that have multiple books of the same couple um and that's the one thing that like YA does that just really um makes me sad is they just end right after they get together whereas like in adult you know there's normally a lot a lot of times physical stuff happening and then um a little bit more depth but yeah it always is such a whiplash when it ends or like if there's like 20 percent left in the ebook but ten percent of that is like a bonus chapter from like the first book in the next, like in the series or something. Oh, that is the worst. Because I'm like, oh yeah, I have twenty percent left. Everything's gonna happen that needs to happen, and then it just ends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's Rip. rough. I know. Um, well, I reread A Caribbean Heiress in Paris by Adriana Herrera because um, I had the arc for An Island Princess Starts a Scandal. Which, um, like I said, is an arc, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. It comes out in at the end of May. Um, there's so much I want to say about it, but, like, my favorite part would kind of be a spoiler, so I don't want to talk about it. But, mm. le- like, 
Mm. Um, oh, God. Okay. So <laughs> I'm like thinking about Cora, one of the heroines, and she's just so good. Um, so it takes place in like La Belle Epoque, Paris. Um, so it's, we're back in Paris uh, with the first book. Mm, we were in Paris. Yes. <laughs> Who knew? Um, like we were in Paris. Hashtag How Taylor many Swift. Taylor Swift references do we think we can work into one episode? Begin again and let's see. Oh. <laughs> um, so it was just, oh God, it was so much fun. Um, despite my texting you saying that we finally got the face sitting and then to actually be shut out of the face sitting, that took a toll emotionally. Um, but basically the beginning... <laughs> emotionally <laughs> the beginning Jamie starts kind of <laughs> sorry, sorry the beginning starts oh uh, yeah it sure Hannah does. will never start um, as beginnings do as beginning, <laughs> the beginning starts um where it's in line with the beginning of a caribbean heiress in paris so they're like mm-hmm. happening at the same time so you can kind okay. of see like that whole which i do like mm-hmm. um so that was fun and then it kind of like branches off because, you know, halfway through um, Luz and Caleb, his name is Caleb, right? Uh, I, that doesn't sound Something. right. It doesn't. I'm going to go with it. I'm Caleb bad with sounds names. American and this man is Scottish. He is. Okay. Now I'm not going to go with it because now it's eating me alive. Um, do, 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 I definitely do. should know his name. Earl James. No, but what he goes the? by his... Um, Sinclair, Evan, 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 yes, Jane. Oh, Evanston. Where did I get Caleb from? Oh, um, is that in is that in a bombshell? Yes. Um, I think that's the guy because I'm thinking of for another book. Okay, there we are. Cool. Um, so you know their romance is happening, and meanwhile, we met Manuela in the first book. Um, and then we had also met, I believe, Cora. She's the Duchess in the first book, like really briefly. Um, I wouldn't have remembered her if I wouldn't have reread book one right before mm-hmm. this. Um, but basically Manuela is, um, engaged to be married to Felix, just a real shitty guy. Um, oh, no. his name is so hot, she's... though. <laughs> you like name Felix? I do. Interesting. I'm not, I, I don't like think I would you. like it if I met a man now named Felix, but in historicals, <laughs> I tend to like Felix's. Interesting. Yeah, well, this one is not great. Rip. But the comeuppance he gets is great. You like um, this book. Mm-hmm. So she's she was an interesting character because a lot of times when the parents are like forcing this engagement, the heroine's like doing it all for them, you know, of like either misplaced duty or something like that. And she partially was because they blamed her for a lot of their issues that they had created themselves. But she was also just like, I like fa- fancy things. I like money. Like I mm. wouldn't want to live on the street. I like shiny things. Yeah. She wouldn't marry him with paper rings. <laughs> She'd Damn. marry him with a fat ass payment. Um, and so basically, her whole thing is that she'll marry him and do her duty, and also, you know, benefit from the marriage if she gets three months in Paris to have her um, like sexual awakening because she hasn't really explored besides like one kiss with another woman because she um, identifies as a lesbian, but she has never really had exposure to like the parisian uh sapphic scene and so she it starts they're at um a brothel and then she meets cora the duchess and she's basically like she's got some land cora needs for a railroad and so uh she's like how about you take me on a tour of all like the sapphic um hangouts and everything and then i will sell you the land at the end of it um and that's all i'm really gonna say just because it's an arc but it was a lot of fun and the end while it kind of frustrated me there were parts i didn't like about like the third act breakup um but the way the wedding happened i'm just gonna say speak now or forever hold your peace oh god and that's (laughs) that's it gave real big speak now vibes with a little more violence so (laughs) it was fun it was fun for me (laughs) not speak now plus violence <laughs> yeah um um i ha- it was really dramatic and everything that happened after was really fun so like i can forgive um wh- what led them to have the breakup because i loved the aftermath of what all happened um 
But yeah, it was really fun. She, like, Cora reminded me a lot of Rebecca from Ted Lasso. So more Ted Lasso, more oh. Taylor Swift. Um, and it was just really lovely to have a sapphic historical romance with two women of color. They're both Latin American. And she just called her, uh, Cora called Manuela Princesa a lot. And it was really hot. Um, and I just love a good, like, sexual awakening, like, discovery book. Um, so, yeah. I had a great time. And I bet the audiobook is going to be fantastic because the audiobook for book one was just so good. I love the narrator. Ooh, I do be yawning. <laughs> nice. Um, well, that's good. I'm excited for that book. Um, let's see. I won't say too much about this one because it's a novella and there's just not that much to say. But I, I will say, um, <laughs> well, so I got the um, – Berkeley sent me – Love Another Flight Delays mm, by Denise mm-hmm. Williams, which is the compilation of the three yep. airport novellas. Um, and I had read the first one back when it had first came out. Um, and I have not read the third one. But I read The Sweetest Connection. Um, honestly, not a lot to say. Uh, it was a novella. But I had a great time. It's Friends mm-hmm. to Lovers. She's going to uh, maybe Paris. <laughs> Is this another Paris reference? I think she's going to Paris because they like went to college together and that's how they become or became friends. Mm-hmm. And they were going to mm-hmm. go together, but then something happened and they couldn't. So she's like finally going and they both work in the airports. So they both hang out all the time, but she's getting ready to go and they find a letter, like a typed pros and cons list that someone who was debating telling their friend that they were in love with them had written it's cute and so they like go on a quest to try to find whose letter it was and end up like helping out some other relationships along the way and then they fall in love well they're already in love but they're friends they take the jump yes yeah yes that um, reminds me that I need to listen to the other two. I listened to one of the audiobooks. I don't think it was the that one. one. I think they were strangers. Yeah, I think I listened to the first one. It was one. the the dog groomer and the writer. Yes. Yeah. Slash uh, risk assessor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I need to get to the other two. And that he's British. Really that cute. one, <sighs> the male uh, narrator, <laughs> that man's <laughs> voice was so fine. <laughs> that's all that was a good face that you just <laughs> and that was fun for me you're welcome <laughs> um yeah i really like denise williams's writing so mm-hmm. you can't really go wrong um i read then another arc it was the seven year slip by ashley poston um and I had previously loved The Dead Romantics. Um, and I know you weren't the biggest fan of it. Um, I do think in that one, you know, the quirk is a little bit over the top. Um, I think in this one, it's a little bit less so. Um, but I had the best time. It was kind of like I requested it before even knowing what it was about. Um, I knew it was like Lake House inspired. So I knew there was like a time travel element. Um I didn't know anything else. And then I had received a newsletter um, from her Substack, and it was like talking a little bit about the book. And so this is just a note on the trigger warnings. Um, there's a major content warning just for suicide. Um, so it was talked about. It like um, it was never on the page, but there was a lot of grief and grieving. Um, and then the hero also had a grandfather um, who had passed away from dementia. Um, if those two topics are, um, you know, of a concern to you, just be aware. Um, I'll, I will link her newsletter because she goes into some really personal stuff in it. Um, so it kind of helps situate the book in my mind. Um, but even without that, um, it was just a really like deep and emotional book, but also just so sweet. The hero was a chef. Oh my god. I like compiled the list of all of the like hot chefs that I've read over the past year. They're all from basically Berkeley, which they must have a weird chef thing. One of their editors must love chefs. Um, but this guy, oh, I can't talk um, much else about it cuz what about <laughs> Love and Other Disasters? A forever book also by Anita Kelly. 
They're on a cooking competition. So That's both, better than the other Berkeley cooking competition chefs. one. I did not Berkeley. enjoy. But this one is nice. delightful. And one of them is non-binary and the other is, I think, bi. Because there's also the rom- – I also read The Romance Recipe by Ruby Barrett. Um, that one's sapphic. Oh, that one I have not read. Mm-hmm. Long story short. Hot chefs. I love food content. Hot chefs. <laughs> so good. Um, so, yeah, I can't really give much away – because there's like even like the, his nickname for her would be a giveaway so i just just know that i had the best time reading it and it was like one of the hardest reviews i've ever had to write because i didn't know how to like sum up how much i loved it um i made like a mini playlist <laughs> at the bottom um which is fun if you end up reading the book go check that out because i think you'll have fun with it hungry eyes is definitely on the playlist because he's a chef duh and I had some hungry eyes because he was also hot. Um, this one had like a little bit more explicitness in the sex scene than Dead Romantics. If you're curious about that, the Dead um, Romantics didn't have a sex scene. It wasn't a sex scene. It was like a very like flowery, vague um, way. Like she like came, but it was in like ah, fireworks and mm. like you know very like euphemistic language and stuff sure. um there still should have been command and masturbation in that book i stand by that um <laughs> till i am a dead romantic <laughs> but uh this one had like an actual sex scene i would say like one or two but they were still like pretty vague um but they got the job done there was a good girl i had a great time um and it surprised me i didn't i thought that dead romantics was gonna stay my favorite um of her adult contemporary but this one did it for me so, yeah. There you go. Speaking of hot chefs, um, mm. which is not normally my thing, but that's the theme. And I'm I didn't know it was it. either. And then it just happened. That's fair. Uh, <laughs> Nisha Sharma sent me uh, an arc mm-hmm. of the next If Shakespeare Was an Auntie book, which comes out August. I want to say late August. Mm-hmm. Um tastes like shucker i shucker i'm trying my best (laughs) i'm so sorry to the south asian community if i have just destroyed that but i think it tastes like shucker um and it's much ado about nothing (laughs) yeah i'm so happy for you listen this has been a this has been a journey it has been a journey the way that everyone who has written a much ado about nothing reimagining retelling inspired by etc Mm-hmm. except for this book, has failed me. The way that yeah. you all got my hopes up and then were like, it's just enemies to lovers. And I'm like, well, Much Ado About Nothing isn't really just enemies to lovers. There's a whole yeah. lot of other things going on. It's fine. I knew Nisha would not let me down because she's like an intellectual and she appreciates Shakespeare. <laughs> and I know, I knew that she was going to get it and I knew this because I, I know we have different feelings, but I loved all the Shakespeare nods in Dating Dr. Dill. So I, I, I knew, mm-hmm. I knew that she would come through for me, and she did. So this one, uh, Bobby and Bunty are the main characters. Uh, Bobby is a hot wedding planner, the best friend nice. of one of the two best friends of Karina from book one. Mm-hmm. And Karina and Prim are getting married, so obviously she's going to plan the wedding. And Benjamin Bunty is a hot chef. He has, like, several different restaurants. Mm. And so, obviously, they want him to make the food. Um, The thing is that they met briefly during book one because, you know, the two groups are three girls and three guys. They're Mm, besties. mm -hmm. Um, They met during some party, uh, and she had promised a client that she would get a meeting with him to try to get him to cater. Mm. He doesn't do catering. So he is, like, refusing, and he's like, no, I'm not – I don't do that. I'm not doing that for you, and she's mad at him about it. So they have this really tension-filled standoff, and then I think they make out against a door. I don't remember if they make out against a door or if they just, like, look really intensely at each other, but I feel like they made out. If they didn't make out, it felt like they did, you know? Um, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then he refuses, and it's, like, a major loss for her, this client, like – leaves and her family that runs the business kind of blames her for it and 
all these things. So they hate each other. Oh, also, he tried to say you're not my type because he's like living that bachelor lifestyle and assumed mm-hmm. that she would want to like, you know, serious relationship, get married. But she is fat. And so when he was like, you're not my type, she assumed that he oh, was being like yeah. a really awful man who wants like a thin, pretty stay at home wife. So she mm-hmm. thinks he's like fat phobic. And he is like, that's not at all what I meant. But OK, so they are like at each other's throats all the time. But now they have to work together to plan this wedding. And there's a saboteur. Someone is, like, trying to sabotage the wedding and they don't know who it is or why. So there's, Mm -hmm. like, that whole little plot line. And also they're very into each other. And then they start a little no strings thing. He calls her, um, it's something in Punjabi, which I googled. And I think it translates to Queen of My Dreams. Specifically because there's a scene on some thrones. Mm. And Ooh. he's like, and she's like, I can get used to you calling me queen. And, you know, some things happen on those okay. thrones. And then he calls her, like, my queen or queen of my dreams for the rest of the book. Um, yeah, also, like he's that. super into bondage. Nice. That's just, <laughs> that's just also just a there. fun fact. <laughs> he's, like, leaving her little re- recipe notes and also tying her up. I want to tie you up. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> That's all. It just it it was everything that I wanted, and it was so Amazing. good. And he's a hot chef. I do want to read that. I think there there was a, just a, like it wasn't anything with the writing or anything that I didn't like in book one. So I think um, that I would have a good time. I also want to try Nisha Sharma's uh, YA, The Karma Map. Too. Yeah. Well, I mean, so you know Karina loves Taylor Swift. In this one, they go yes. on their joint bachelor bachelorette party to Vegas and Bobby as the wedding planner has made all of them like vintage style album t shirts and assigned each of That's them a Taylor amazing. Swift album. Which made me I love that. Karina. I love her. So go her for that. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I do love a good Taylor Swift reference. <laughs> Who knew? She, like, gives the one friend – She I don't remember what album she gave her, and she was like, mm, I would have preferred Red. And she's like, don't worry, I made a backup in case you were feeling Red. <laughs> oh, I'm feeling 22. All right. Yeah, um, I did it. I don't regret it. It's okay. almost as if you did something bad. <laughs> it feels so Why does it feel so good? <laughs> don't blame me. All right, so last week, or last Friday, it was love, uh, blank in the afternoon. <laughs> this episode is just Taylor Swift references. TBR Tuesday, Taylor's version. <laughs> oh, that's where we're at. Um, <laughs> in uh, Hannah's version, uh, I read a series completely out of order. Because what? I'm a chaos... I'm a chaos gremlin. I had seen, for some reason, I had Cat Sebastian's, Sebastian, I did not say that word, Cat Sebastian's The Ruin of a Rake on my TBR. Um, so I had had that on Libby. I don't quite remember what inspired me to download it, but I'm happy I did. Um, so I read that one. That's book three. And then I went to A Little Light Mischief, which is the sapphic novella after book three. And then I went to book two. <laughs> and then I went to book one. <laughs> Because why not? Take a crazy chance. Get a little Hillary Duff in there. Um, book three was definitely my favorite. I loved them all. They were all so good. Um, but book three was so much fun. Um, there was a great opera scene. Basically, um, one of the heroes, because they're all, well, three of them are uh, male, male. And then the novella is uh, sapphic. Mm. Um, and so in book three, which is the only one I'll talk about, but I No, I loved the rest. Um, The one hero needs his reputation. um, (laughs) Reputation has never been worse. Uh, (laughs) He needs his reputation fixed because there's been a book detailing all of his, um, you know, chaos around the continent and stuff. Um, And so he's just his reputation's in the gutter. And um, his friend Eleanor has a brother. Bringing up his history. Exactly. We're just not. We're not going to be stopped. Um, <laughs> uh, it's treacherous out here. Uh, um, so 
Or Basically, she's Eleanor's brother is, <laughs> Love Spiral <laughs> is um he's very upstanding in the uh ton and so basically um it's like she's like hey my brother can help you repair your reputation meanwhile he's like how about i don't because i'm very attracted to him but also i don't like him um Mm -hmm. because he believes that he is like the rogue libertine rake and everything which i mean courtney is but like hot um and so it's just all of the, and the other, the other hero is Julian. So it's uh, Courtney and Julian. Um, and so it's just all of them, like the forced proximity of repairing um, his reputation because um, guess who wrote the book that ruined it? That was the final nail in the coffin. That's right. Julian. Betrayal. We know that story all too well. Mm. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah. Um, there was a lovely six scene at the end, but the, the best scene in the book was um, one of their first uh, jaunts into town was to the opera. And uh, Courtney just whips Julian's chair around and just goes to town on him in the opera. And it was great. I love a good opera scene. It was so hot. Um, yeah. I had a lot of fun with that series. The writing was so fun. The narrator was really good. He had He took a little bit getting used to because he like the dialogue was really good. But then his just, like, normal talking voice for, like, the inner stuff was a little, like, I don't know, like, breathy or, like, he did something at the end of, like, each sentence that was a little bit odd, but I got over it. He narrated all of them, um, and I had a I had a lovely time. But, yeah, that – The Ruin of a Rake was definitely my favorite, and I'm happy I started with it um, because it had, like, the – the epilogue was like all of the characters from all of the books together. Um, So it was actually really nice because knowing me, I wouldn't recognize them going the opposite way. Like I'd read book one and then like I read it normally and then book two and then book three. But this way I got to know like who I needed to remember. And then I was able to find them. (laughs) I need a map. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But definitely recommend – and I want to read – I've read others by Cat Sebastian, but I want to get through um, the entire backlist at some point. Mm. So, yeah. Noted. Um, I don't need to talk too much about this one because you already have, but I've read Hotel of Secrets. Ah. Um, ah, yes. The, I did the audio book, which comes out today, if you're yeah, listening today. to this when we release the episode. Go get um, it. So, Yes. Uh, I, again, you've already talked about it. So mm-hmm. it's Viennese ball season. It's a hotel. She's got a whack ass family tree. <laughs> Truly the most bonkers thing I've ever read. Mm-hmm. Family tree wise, I mean, um, the plot isn't that bonkers, but you know, there's some wild boars and things that come out of the woodwork. <laughs> so people get a just straight up bored, shot uh, gored sorry not bored <laughs> they get gored by I, a boar on the um the wild boar tangent i was looking through my notes to find <laughs> something and one of my notes started off as gored by a wild boar but still carrying her fountain i was like what the fuck was i talking about and then i remembered what that was from and it was from this book um mm-hmm. whoever thought you could make being gored by a wild boar sexy but this man did i mean yes, you get did. this like care what you might call it like hurt comfort scene and mm-hmm. it's in a cabin in the woods mm-hmm. as we mm-hmm. know cabins really the do the work carry. um it was great i especially recommend the audiobook if you like me probably don't realize how to say lots of these names because they're like german yes, <laughs> yes i do sure not. didn't realize that it was volner till i was listening and i was like oh mm-hmm. all right anyway um, twas a delight. There were a lot of characters, but my brain did sort them out after a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it was and he was a virgin hero. He sure was. Mm. I respect that. Um, I have long had attending ball season in Vienna on my bucket list. <sighs> and this book, I was like, I just want to go waltz in Vienna. I know. Oh, I Lord. want... I want Hannah to have her own book because she was like the chef mm-hmm. and she was making all sorts of desserts. They sounded delicious. Twas and then she had some she had something going on with Mac. I think yeah. The because he was the half-brother. like half brother. Yeah. 
and that was hot. So I hope there's like a novella or something. Book. Well, and she was I like, know. oh, like they can never be together because the class oh, difference patootie. is too great. But like the crush is really cute. And I was like, number one, an unrequited crush between these two people who can never be together because of class differences. Not cute. Devastating. Number two, it's like you've never read a historical romance, Maria <laughs> Volner. What's a little class difference between lovers? What's a little what is is the question of the night oh uh, yeah i already want to reread that one it was so good it's my favorite of uh diana biller's books she writes her heroes just so well also the mm. little guy gang uh, that eli against his will becomes a part of with, with mac one, like, and claude I, <laughs> the french spy <laughs> he's like i'm spying on you funny. obviously yeah. And they're, like, drunk, and Eli is like, please let me leave. And they're like, mm-hmm. no. I uh, mm-hmm. I loved mm-hmm. them. And then by the end, he, like, mm-hmm. is their friend, and you're like, oh. I know. I know. I just want to be part of that relationship. I'm All so of the relationships, same. honestly. Yeah. Never get bored. So, yeah. It was very fun. Okay. Well, speaking of Virgin Heroes – um i read better off wed by Susanna craig but then the audiobook at the beginning she says craig the narrator and then she says krog so i don't know Susanna. <laughs> probably not krog well i know every audiobook so listen to all three at the beginning Susanna craig at the end Susanna krog i'm like which one you are narrating her book please tell me that's weird. still a mystery um as is uh this book which is also kind of like mysterious spy things because it's part of the love and let spy series you read and talked about book four Mm -hmm. um in one of our previous tbr tuesdays i think that's the green one uh better off wed is the red one um it's number three and definitely my favorite so far i'm really excited for book four um but the audiobook has had like a whole time so i'm just waiting um but this one is they're like two kind of spies um she's lady sterling which is if if you read bombshell by sarah mclean it's kind of that like um, vigilante like taking down rich Mm, men vigilante shit yes yeah vigilante shit (laughs) exactly (laughs) nothing i do better than revenge Mm. um and so (laughs) well and she's also dressed for revenge because she's like trying to seduce all these men and get their secrets which Mm. is hot um so She's like in Bombshell, um, their whole ring of taking down men. She's it's just her doing it in this one. Um mm. I think she did it. <laughs> but I just can't <laughs> prove it. <laughs> That's the entire vibe. <laughs> just can't prove it. Um <laughs> And so uh, the hero's name, he is a spy, but he is also a lord. And his name is Lord Sterling, his title. Um, And so people, namely his sister, have joked at him about um, how she's his wife and that it must be really um, fun and embarrassing for him that his wife is just doing all this vigilante justice um, and that he is just a boring old, um, I don't, he's obviously, I don't think he's like said he's a spy, so whatever they're alias was um but then his not spy handler but whoever's like commanding him the guy he's like in each book he's like a matchmaker (laughs) just sitting there (laughs) matching all these couples i have nothing better to do (laughs) same and so um so he's like hey uh i'm gonna need you to marry her because the names fit um and you're gonna have to go to this house party and um get these secrets from these people and um it was just it was really fun it was so sweet he like i said he was a virgin um that one that didn't like come into play too much he was just like pretty good at it naturally i mean he had he had like daddy issues for the reason why Mm -hmm. he was a virgin so um and it was actually it ended up being like (laughs) ended up being really sweet um and emotional and oh it was so good it reminded me of like the secret service of tea and treason um in like the plot setup way because like fake dating or like fake marriage um at the house party and fake marriage is honestly so much better than fake dating because like fake marriage they already think you're fucking but in like (laughs) romance like fake engagement like people don't so it was just very fun 
Um, and then I read the other two, which were good in their own right. Um, but this one was definitely my favorite. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> it's nice yeah. to have a friend. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Um, that was. I'm feeling pain. I'm feeling it, 22. The reprise. We need like a ticker, you mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm. to count. Yeah, because we made we made our love in the afternoon joke 11 times. I'm glad in that you, episode. You noted that. I did. I did. That's frankly too many times for a joke, but I'm pretty sure we we've already passed that in yeah, this episode. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. um, I read The Rat Catcher's Daughter by KJ Yeah, Charles. that was a wild title to see on your tracker. I was like, huh? It's actually not – so the reason it's called The Rat Catcher's Daughter is because the heroine – this is another um, novella that I read for the Trans Rights Readathon. Mm-hmm. Um, so the heroine is trans, and she's – what's called in Victorian England and, um, a, a female impersonator, which was like mm-hmm. a – basically like a drag queen mm-hmm. like that would dress up as a woman, although in her case, she's trans – um, mm-hmm. but, like, obviously to most people, she's just a female impersonator. Yeah. Uh, but she is a, like, music hall singer. Um, and so she sings these various songs, some of the lyrics you get. And one of the songs she sings is The Rat Catcher's Daughter. And there's, like, a funny mm-hmm. little bit at the end where they realize that she was singing this song when she, like, made eye contact with the hero. Um, and uh-huh. the part, there's a part of the song where it says something along the lines of, like, this man who – I can't remember the exact lyrics. He's a man who sells lily white sand in Cupid's net, caught her, the pretty little rat catcher's daughter. Um, and he is the fence for the lily white boys who are these, <clears throat> like, gangster-type characters. A careless she, man's careful daughter. Nice. She – it's like this whole little bit where she's like, no, my dad's actually a police officer. Oh. Uh, but she – was cut off essentially by her like she doesn't speak to her father anymore because mm-hmm. you know anyway this one it was pretty short i think it's like four chapters so it's really not even a novella it's like a short story um and it was so fun she i mean there's some violence <laughs> it opens with her basically being resigned to her fate to get beat to a pulp because oh. this really awful dude bought her ious Mm. and basically like is her pimp and like got her to work for him and the way that he makes money is by sending girls in or women like christiana um for like weird gross men who want to take advantage of women uh and then he has them rob the men and give him the money and such but she was like not into it and left without doing anything or robbing him and this guy makes examples of people who don't follow through for him Mm. so she's like fully aware that she's about to get the shit beat out of her um or had like acid or something thrown in her face it was gonna be bad and also there was a lot of um like misgendering and stuff in this Mm -hmm. first part but then these two random guys show up and are like like strong arm them into like they buy her like what she's worth from mm-hmm. him and are like never mess with her again hot and she's like who even are you like what do i owe you now and they're like oh you yeah. don't we just have a friend who is like an admirer of yours and nice. he found out that you were in trouble and asked us to take care of it so we did and like she's that. thinking like what do i owe him like is he gonna want me to like sleep with him like all these stuff and it turns out mm-hmm. no he's they never use the term but he's basically asexual he's his name is stan mm-hmm. He just wants to run a clock shop. He's also a fence. And he, like, saw her performing one day and thought she was just, like, the most beautiful woman in the world. So he's come to all of her performances since. And they're like, hey, we would really appreciate it if you would, like, go, like, give him a smile. Maybe say hi. Thanks. You don't have to fuck him, but <laughs> just, like, say hi. So he let, they, like, force him to go bring her flowers after her performance. And she's, like, really nervous about it. But he's really sweet. And they just go, like, get a drink together and hang mm-hmm. out. And then they hang out for a few chapters and they agree that, like, they don't want to have sex or anything like that. Like, that's not something either of them mm-hmm. are interested in. But, like, they hold hands and they kiss and it's very nice. And then he gets kidnapped by the bad guys 
because he oh, didn't agree God. to a thing. I love kidnapping. Um, and he almost gets the shit beat out of him. But then the literally white boys show back up and save the day and drop a guy out of the window and stuff. So. Yes. And then, then they live happily ever after. I love that. I know I literally just explained the plot, but there's more to it than that. <laughs> that sounds really cute. It's only four chapters, so it's hard to limit myself. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah, it's really short. Oh, my. But somehow, all these things happen. It was very cute. It's impressive. Are they, like, long chapters? Uh, I mean, not, like, super long. It's a fairly short impressive. book. I like But that. it works. It's, like, the prequel to the Lily White Boys. Gotcha. So. Gotcha, gotcha. They just have a cute little romance. Aww. Well, I don't know if I consider these books cute, <laughs> but uh, the last four on my <laughs> list were a panic uh, Immortals After Dark read. <laughs> I was just not feeling what I had up in my Libby and like what I had to read um, because like there were things like arcs and stuff. And so I was just like, how about I reread A Kiss of a Demon King? Sure. Because... I need that in my life. Sure. And then it starts with, obviously, uh, she may be an evil bitch, but she's my evil bitch. The the best line. The best line. <laughs> and then I just got to experience that book all over again, and I had a marvelous time. So I was like, why don't I read more in the series? Because that's healthy. Uh, so I skipped all the way from book book seven to 13 i skipped them all they caused me too much stress and emotional damage that i physically don't think i could reread them um but book 14 i loved it because that was sabine's sister lanthe um and so i loved oh that book was so cute um it was like a childhood like friends to then she pushes or makes him push himself out of a window and so then they're enemies and then he captures her so then it's more there's a lot of like revenge all the books i love like there's just so much revenge it's so hot Ugh. and then uh wicked abyss was number 17 so then i did skip 15 and 16 um but 17 it's like beauty and the beast um he has this um curse because now he's the like king of hell and when you're the king of hell you start to like look like hell so he's got a lot of piercings that he didn't have before. He used to be, like, real hot. Arguably, he's still really hot. Um, he's just got, like, <laughs> more devilish coloring. I don't know. Um, he's got some big horns. <laughs> just got a lot of stuff going on. Um, and then she's she, – the heroine is literally kidnapped by Lanthe and Sabine of those two previous books, dropped into hell. For some reason, well, we the reasons we know, um, and then basically he's like, "Cool, this is also revenge because you are the reincarnation of the woman, my mate, who uh fucked me over thousands, like a thousand years ago, and I'm still angry, so I'm gonna take it out on you." Which may be problematic. I don't care. <laughs> um, it made for a raucously good time because she was like, "Why are you doing this to me?" He's like. I'm angry and she's not here. So it just the circle of life. Um, but then once he realizes that she's uh, getting blisters and stuff from cleaning, he's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And it was just really good. The ending was great because ugh, there's just so much. Um, so yeah, that one was real fun. Ugh. And then uh, I read Monroe, which is the last one before the next one that Chrisley publishes, which is coming out at the end of the year, which I'm really excited about. Um, that one. I'll just put a deadline on the, <laughs> I have to read all the rest of that series. Yeah, by then. yeah, you do. You do, because then we can talk about them, but also um, just so you can go through all of it. Um, and I want your opinions on them. But uh, Monroe was just like the, the sweetest of them all. So I guess cute and sweet could kind of, I mean, that one's sad, but, like, cute. Um, basically, he has, there's a little bit of time traveling, and then he's one of the, um, like, 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 a, so he's one of the wolves, which are just so hot. I have a thing for the demons, um, yeah. and then, technically, the one angel of Dark Sky, book 14, he's also, like, demonish, um, Wicked Abyss, I mean, he's freaking from hell, so, demon, uh, Rydstrom, demon. And then I loved all the books 
through like one through six and like the prequel so like vampires and such but uh the werewolves and the demons are my my guys um monroe was just so soft and he just really wanted a family he like adopted like a few like different kids throughout his life and it was just real cute and i love a hero who like really wants a family yeah it was it was real and in all the books like the breeding kink is high (laughs) and we're just holding on you know, but that one was real intense. I could see that. Because um, he really just wanted pups. And the, he just called them his laddies. Oh, God, it was so cute. Uh, it well, was I feel just... like historicals, it's really, really rare <sighs> to see a man who doesn't just see marriage as, like, yeah. this thing he has to a, do. Yeah, a prison. And who typically, I mean, other than, like, you, you get, like, West Ravenel or some other ones that yeah. will like break the mold a little bit but typically even mm-hmm. if it's like like they're not against having kids but it's not like a thing they're tom severin he for. has to yeah like the kid has to be like given to him yeah There's but no for him to realize like, felicia grossman's uh the cinderella married by Mar- marry me mm-hmm. by midnight mm-hmm. that comes out in mm-hmm. august midnight uh, <laughs> Marry me at midnight <laughs> Why are you doing that voice? Stop. I don't, well, because she does that like the... No, but stop. Wah, wah, ah. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. We're so unhinged. <laughs> anyway, uh, he he's the Cinderella character, and he's like an orphan who was taken in by the community and now is like a synagogue custodian and he mm-hmm. cares for it because he's Cinderella. So there are like little families of mice and birds and things that he takes care oh. of. Um, but his whole thing is that he really, really wants a family. Like he wants to mm-hmm. get a like good job and provide and like be someone that a matchmaker would actually mm-hmm. like give him a match so that he can like have a wife and children mm-hmm. to take care of. He just wants a family so badly, but he's been told his whole life that he's, like, stupid and has no skills, so he doesn't think he'll ever be able to have that. And you're like, my sweet boy. (laughs) Just wait. Anyway, um, I only Mm. have two more. One of them is not romance. It's Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas, um, Mm -hmm. which is also for the trans rights readathon. Uh, The main Mm -hmm. character is a trans boy. Uh, it's like YA fantasy it made me want to watch Coco they're not the same plot wise but they both deal with like Dia de los Muertos um and like Mm -hmm. the afterlife but in this case he's a brujo so he can like like his whole family they can like see spirits and they at a certain age learn how to like release them into the afterlife and whatnot and there's mm-hmm. a mystery and someone has died and they don't know where he is and he meets this like spirit of a boy who doesn't know how he died and so they have to try to help him and obviously they fall in love. It's really, really light on the romance, honestly. Um, but like they do fall in love. This one was really interesting as a like a trans main character. It's written by a trans author, obviously, specifically because mm-hmm. it deals with like <laughs> Spanish is a gendered language, so in the community, the, yeah. they're brujex, and a brujo is the male, and they, like, have the sword or dagger things, and they send the spirits mm-hmm. into the afterlife, whatever, and the brujas um, are healing, and they can do, like, that kind of magic, and so Yadriel, uh, I think that's his name, Yadriel is the main character, and his whole thing is that, like, he wants to prove that he can be a brujo, and... His dad is like, no, because he thinks that he's a bruja. And so he has to, like, do it himself and prove that, like, Lady Death will bestow her blessing on him as a brujo because he's a boy. Mm -hmm. And it was just a really interesting, like, looking at gendered language and, like, really embodying what does Mm -hmm. that mean to be one gender or the other and what happens when you're trans. And the answer is, he became a brujo. I love that. It was quite good. Um, and then the other one, which I also can't say very much about because it's not even like on NetGalley or anything yet, <sighs> is My Rogue to Ruin by Erica Ridley. Standard disclaimer, it's a forever title. Um, I, I, it's Marjorie Winchester's story. So y'all know I love the first three Winchesters. Big Winchester's gal over here. So good. 
They are all so good. Marjorie the is the painter who can forge mm-hmm. basically anything. Um, she's also partially deaf, which is very interesting. She has – there's a word for it, and now I can't think of it, but, like, she sees colors. Everybody sees colors. But, I mean, oh, like, she yeah. sees – um basically like people's auras but i know that's not what it is but like she sees yeah colors There's, that we don't billy eilish has it yeah i don't know how to describe it but when you read it you'll know what i'm talking about yeah. um and yeah. then the hero is a rogue who has been blamed for something he didn't do and had been banished to the continent but now he's back but he was forging antiquities and he got on the wrong side of a bad guy and now he's like locked in a room forging uh, counterfeit currency against his will. And she's undercover to try to stop him, thinking that he's a bad guy, but he's not a bad guy. Doing it of his own volition. Sure. Um, and I won't say much more, uh, but there is a hedgehog. The hedgehog's <laughs> name is Tickletums. I honestly do wish that Tickletums ha- had more of a role. He has a, a ro- he saves the day. Mm-hmm. Like, he does it. He does the. <laughs> the thing i however just wanted to see even more um he was superman flying around mainly i just wanted him there all the time and he wasn't there all the time yeah so it's not really fair to criticize based on that it's just my personal preference but it's fine it was really good the hero was hot and he was so damaged nice which is my catnip I love a broken man. Um, I thought you were just going to say, he's so sweet. No, no, he <laughs> he's is. He's so damaged. damaged. Um, Amazing. He's mm, delicious. Also, it's fun because it has that, like, Winchester heist aspect. So they they do a couple mm-hmm. of heists. And then you think to yourself, oh, that came pretty, like, it, it wrapped up pretty well. Like, hmm, that was pretty early. Yeah. I was, And then there's more. You're like, uh oh, but it's all uh, it's external. I love that. So, Ugh, a delight. I'm so excited. I know I'm trying to like no, read all of my my arcs on NetGalley so I can like get the Christina Britton and Erica Ridley when they're available. So I'm currently reading the Christina Britton, and I've only read the first couple chapters. But I will say, uh, somebody gets pushed out the window by a dog and falls to his death in the first I'm chapter. I'm so ready for that. He's a bad guy, so it's fine. But like, there's a duel. Mm. Love a duel. It's actually the second time that guy has climbed up to her window in the prologue in first chapter, so. Wow. It's a lot, a lot of climbing up windows. Yeah. Nice. I'm currently reading um, With Love from Cold World by Alicia Thompson having a very good time um i'm like halfway through it so hopefully by tonight or tomorrow it'll be done um and then i have like six arcs left on my net gallery shelf which is a great feeling because i had so many and it was overwhelming <laughs> i was like please and they're all anticipated like highly anticipated so it's just so much pressure like i can't just like roll into them without like girding my loins I'm, I don't know if I'm sufficiently girded. Like, I'm scared. There's like Megan Frampton or Megan Frampton. I'm so sorry. I always say Megan. It's Megan. Megan Frampton, like Lorraine Heath. Like, there are just so many. And then all the ones that I like read before them, I was like, oh, they're not like as high. And they were all great. And I'm like, this isn't fair. I mean, it's great that they're all great, but that's like a lot of positive reviews. And those are so hard to write. All of the books <laughs> you loved before. That's such a good song. <sighs> yeah, if I could, I contemplated momentarily trying to sing that, but that's going to be a no go. So, <laughs> we established um, early on in the episode. <laughs> yes. Speaking of that, though, uh, that book really reminded me of uh, that book. That song was really um, the seven year slip. Because there was, like, the whole time travel and multiple versions of yourself. And it just really worked. I was, like, really in my feels. And I was, like, Hits Different is also that book. Because um, there's just, like, the key turn in the lock down the hallway, whatever. It's a whole thing. Um, yeah. I, I was a bit unhinged with that. And then Invisible String. They all, I mean, any book you can find a Taylor Swift song. She's got a lot of them. Um... Yeah, look at us. We're under two hours. <laughs> Such an accomplishment. 
Oh my god, but uh, yeah, I request that you read more in More Worlds After Dark. <laughs> There'll be a good reset. I'm like starting from the beginning now. I'm getting up to getting up to the six. I'll probably reread book six again. <laughs> there's just so much edging. Like when I said an edging like no other, I meant it. Because there's so much. Like just so much. Like I don't it's not really revenge seduction, but there is sure revenge and there is sure seduction. <laughs> It's lovely, so yeah, that's all I've got. That's that's it for me too. Well, mm-hmm. we did the thing. We did S- it. Subscribe, follow. Yes, um, I always feel like garbage doing that. <laughs> I'm really bad at like self promo, so I'm like, ew. I don't want to tell people to subscribe. <laughs> Ew, who's Taylor Swift anyway? Why are you this way? Get out of my house! <laughs> I don't know where that came from. I have Get out of my lover house? With- or the, the Eros house? <laughs> that would be- um, uh, but yeah, we have a sub stack and you should subscribe. Um, I apparently have no compunction about <laughs> self-promo. Uh, we're so doing I'll self promo th- all day. Um, <laughs> yeah, we'll um, I knit sweaters, yo. Um, we will. <laughs> Do you know that deep cut? I don't think so. T swizzle, T pizzle. She did a a S or a, an award show like skit with T Pain, um, back in like two thousand eight, and one of her bits was that like, it. She knit sweaters. <laughs> I'm like eight foot four, blonde hair to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> okay it's a great it's a great bit um and i think about it frequently i don't um but we know a lot of taylor swift deep cuts i do know mm, th- what is it three three uh something virgins three i can't remember the three something i don't know three young young no. No, young doesn't sound three right Three something virgin then it's gonna kill me because that song is a bop and every time i hear it i'm like when is it going on spotify taylor Three. I'm Googling. Mm-hmm. Good. Because it's going to kill me. Sad. Ugh, three, three sad, sad. Mm. A bop. When it is it is going to be on Spotify so that I can listen to it all the time? Sam with Hits Different. I know you don't like that one, but it's so good. I TikTok forced me into it. Oh, that's good. I'm I used the sped up version so much that now it's stuck it's in my head all the time. Now it's in your head, yeah. I See, I only listen to it in my car. Um... Like, I could figure out, like, I could get it on my phone, but makes it special. Uh, but, yeah, we have we have a sub stack, and we have fun things planned for said sub stack, especially when we were on break um, after our episode on Friday. So yes. we're in, like, a two-week break. But our sub stack will still be popping. So I think it's longer than two saying. weeks. Is it? It's, like, I the think end it's of like March through, like, the 18th. I think it's – I think we come back on the 18th with a TBR Tuesday. Uh, subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah thank you thank you so much <laughs> why did you um, sound like you were weeping <laughs> thank you <laughs> uh, thank you um yeah i really want a taylor swift outro like quote but i can't think of anything all i can think of is that i'm gonna let you finish <laughs> stop <laughs> the end <laughs>